In April 2018, I clicked on a YouTube video that claimed to show a six-week-old baby talking. I was a little skeptical about if the video's claims would be true. However, I clicked on it anyways because it had over 1 million views, I don't have any kids, and I was just curious about the video. After I watched the video, it helped me understand more fully the importance of having a different type of language partner. I want to share more with you about this. My name is Franklin, and this is FirstThousandHours.com. Don't give up on your language learning marathon. You can make it. You can make it through your first thousand hours. Video, the specific YouTube video I watch with one million views is no longer on YouTube, but this is what I wrote in April 2018 about it. After I watched the video, I realized that, of course, a six-week-old baby can't talk. However, he communicated in a way that was appropriate for his stage of development. In that sense, the title was correct. He talked, baby talk. For me, this video is full of lessons when it comes to language learning. Just like I don't expect a baby to come out of the womb giving a university lecture, I can't expect for myself to be a child in Spanish and be ready to do a university lecture. Language learning takes time and I have to enjoy the process. One huge part of this video was the baby's language coach, his mom. Every single time she asked him to speak, he messed up not only on pronunciation, but he didn't even speak one English word. Nevertheless, his language coach didn't give up on him. She kept on encouraging him. She believed that he would talk, although apparently he had never spoken English before. She didn't mock his mistakes or think he was a failure because he did make mistakes. She was just patient and hopeful with her son. I am becoming more convinced that language coaches or mentors have a very important role to play in language learning. If people are extremely motivated to learn a language and they have someone that believes in them, their probability of succeeding in their language learning pursuits is greatly increased, I believe. I also don't believe this language mentor has to necessarily even know the language that the language students are trying to study. The mentor just needs to be able to communicate in a language that the student knows to give them hope, motivation, and encouragement. I think part of the reason some people stop studying languages has more to do with our level of motivation than our time constraints and perceived bilingual aptitude. I recently saw a similar video on YouTube called Three Month Old Talking Baby, which has gotten over three million views. In it, the father and I believe the mother ask their son to say either I love you or daddy approximately 20 times. Every single time they ask their son to speak those phrases, the son speaks gibberish. The father and mother laugh a little bit, but it's not because they are mocking their child. In the middle of the video, the father expresses being proud of his son when he says, daddy's little man. Also, the title of the video, again, is Three-Month-Old Talking Baby. I didn't hear not one English word coming from the baby, but I believe that title expresses the sentiments of being proud of the baby's progress at three months. Throughout the video, the baby was surrounded with positivity and encouragement from his parents. How could he not succeed in learning English to a high level with that type of environment? When our level of speech is like a baby in our second language, don't we need similar encouragement? In the language learning community, there is an emphasis placed on having a language partner whose native language is the one you're trying to learn. There is definitely much merit in having a language partner. However, I think there needs to be more emphasis placed on having a language motivational partner because that's what we had when we were learning our first language. What is a language motivational partner? It is a person that speaks in a language that you know or are familiar with, who knows by experience the struggles in language learning and who seeks to encourage you on your language learning marathon. This has really helped me with Spanish. You can listen to my story of how I went to a Spanish church, 
four times in a row and had the worst level of comprehension on my fourth visit and how my language motivational partner, Connie Warner, helped me have the right mindset about that experience. I will leave a link in the description of this video so you can listen to it. In the various places I've lived in America, serious foreign language learning outside of school isn't a big hobby for many Americans. We're many times proud monolinguals. We like knowing English to the exclusion of any other language. When people try to learn a foreign language in America to be able to use it in real life, Sometimes they might not have the encouragement and support that's given to babies learning their first language. I'm not even sure if that's intentional. It's a common thing to see a baby develop into a polished English speaker, but it's more of a rarity to see a monolingual adult transform into a polished bilingual speaker in America. Even language learners themselves might not have a positive mindset when they think about their mistakes. When you think when you make a mistake in your target language, does that prevent you from believing you can speak better in that language after spending your first thousand hours with it? I'm thankful that we can use the Internet to create a supportive peer group to help us accomplish our language learning goals. For example, my language learning partner, Connie Warner, and I are learning different languages, but we have the same native language, English. Obviously, we are not trying at, at all to teach each other the languages that we are trying to learn. We both place an emphasis on reading and listening to things in our target language. Also, we are both trying to use the languages we're learning in real world situations as opposed to just learning technical aspects of a language that has no use in the real world. We both like learning about language learning theory. We congratulate each other on our little victories. We are able to share our language learning struggles with each other. And we both believe that we're going to get to a higher level in our language learning marathon as we keep immersing ourselves in our target language. I personally have done better even in school when I've had a study group. I remember taking Calculus 1 at the University of Central Florida. All we were graded on in that class was three tests. We didn't even have to come to class regularly if we didn't want to. On my first calculus test, I got a D. Afterwards, I organized a study group. In that study group, we went over the practice questions for our second and third tests. I asked each of us, including myself, to explain in front of everyone how to arrive to the answer of one of the practice questions. When I took the next two calculus tests, I remembered the conversations that we had in the study group and the tests were relatively easy. I thank God that the study group, my personal efforts, and probably some of my teacher's mercy brought my grade up to a B in Calculus 1. Even when we live in a country where the norm is to speak only one language, many times it's easier for us to continue in our language learning marathon with a supportive peer group. The results from the Ash Conformity Experiment helps us understand why. Ash had five actors and a real subject give answers to very simple questions. The four actors gave their answers first, and then the real subject gave his, and finally, another actor gave his answer. Over time, the actors gave wrong answers on purpose. Ash found that subjects went along with the group in 37% of the critical trials. With a partner... Yielding drops to only 5% of the critical trials compared to 37% without a partner. It is human nature that having even one person that supports you in learning a language can help you overcome the pressure to be content with being monolingual. 
Even if you don't have a language motivational partner, there are other resources both online and offline that can help inspire and motivate you in your language learning marathon in the form of videos, language learning groups, blogs, and etc. One of my personal sources of inspiration is the talents chapter in a book called Christ Object Lessons. It challenges me to reach God's ideal, not only in spiritual and physical matters, but in mental acquirements as well. I will leave a link in the description of this video to where you can read that chapter and even the whole book for free. I found that encouragement really has made a difference in my language learning marathon, and I hope you've experienced that as well. My name is Franklin, and this is for SouthernHours.com. Don't give up on your language learning marathon. You can make it. You can make it through your first thousand hours.